How's it going, everybody? Thank you all for swinging on by. Today is going to be episode in the world of video game music, and we're going to be discussing Fire Emblem, specifically Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light, and Fire Emblem Gaiden. What makes these games pretty uh, unique is that, first of all, they were exclusively released in Japan only back in uh, 1990 and uh, 91, as you saw. And it wasn't until many, many, many years later that the Westerners were able to actually play them. Maybe not the original format, but um, either a port or remake of them. And then uh, eventually you saw in 2020, we got to play the original one in English. But for a lot of us, uh, our introduction to Fire Emblem would have been through Super Smash Brothers Melee. At least that's what it was for me. So I'm glad that we are able to actually play these games, especially with the internet, being able to emulate them and also have fan translations. But I really enjoy the music from these games. So I really wanted to bring in somebody to discuss this with, somebody that I've met online who uh, I think shares the same passion as me for video game music and especially in Fire Emblem. So without further ado, let me introduce to you, you guys, uh, Mr. Cash Money. How's it going, dude? Hey, what's going on, everybody? <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> you're good. You're good. <laughs> How's everybody doing? How's it going, Angry? It's going good, man. I appreciate <coughs> you swinging on by for this. Um, I know you're a busy guy. You're always on other people's live streams and uh, sharing live your streams, input on stuff. My, my own stream I'm, I'm working on, and I'm happy my channel's growing, but I also want to help as many people as I can. So there's some good, there's definitely some good people in the chat, people like Pop Culture. He's, uh, his, his channel's growing. And, yes. Um, yeah, Whoopa, definitely. And yes, I think I've seen Michael leader. T3 around. Yes, comrade leader. <laughs> yeah, so Michael is one of uh, Blaine's buddies that I told you about. Um, he plays uh, Fire Emblem. He actually was streaming earlier. I think he was streaming Three Houses, if I'm not correct. Or nice. if I am correct. Um, I have that game. <laughs> yeah, so he's he knows his stuff. And uh, I think Alex, if he comes by, he's a big Fire Emblem fan as well. So uh, these guys are funny to talk to about it. But uh, yeah, so we introduced the chat. We, like I said, Whoopa, thanks for coming, man. He's my top moderator, pop culture mechanic, great friend of mine. I was just on his live stream uh, Tuesday. We did t uh, Trade Talks Tuesday, and I told him about my previous um, uh, career and uh, doing Very some cool. uh, aircraft maintenance. So that was interesting. And then um, Mike D, Michael D. Yeah. But uh, without further ado, I want to... Uh, jump right into this so actually before we get started um i want to ask you cash what was your first experience with fire emblem and what is like out of all of them you've played like which one do you like to go back to to play or listen to the music for uh awakening awakening is the one that really got me into fire emblem so on the awakening on the 3ds Nice. Or okay. I guess you can emulate it too, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that here. <laughs> no, we don't do that. Uh, yeah. you, you heard nothing, YouTube. You heard nothing. Do, 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 do. Yes. <laughs> that's that's interesting because I remember Awakening was what really um, got the attention of Fire Emblem in the U.S. because they mm -hmm. designed that game specifically for the uh, like the Western market, I think. To um, yep. they, I mean, they added the uh, casual mode, so that's like without the permadeath. Uh, but they still kept the permadeath option. Yes. That was an option there. But the the range of characters and like the voice acting and the storytelling um, was pretty much a mirror of Shadow Dragon, uh, with the exception of like a couple changes. But yeah, that's really cool. Um, I think that would be the same for me. Um, was that? But uh, actually, go ahead. If, sorry, you could keep talking about um, your experience with uh, Fire Emblem. Yeah, I mean, Fire Emblem, you know, you hear that theme. It's just great. Um, and you, you're, you're, you're just pumped up. And when you have the, the battles, you've got the, the battle music, and it's just, it, it's awesome. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, for me, it was Smash Brothers Melee. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I, like I said, I think that's for almost everybody in the West was Smash Brothers Melee because the first Fire Emblem game that came to the West was on the Game Boy, and it was um, I think Fire Emblem Four is what they call it, and um, I want to say it was um, the Binding Blade is what the official name is, and uh, yeah, so like there there were Game Boy games that brought Fire Emblem to the West, but 
um, at the time, Sakurai for uh, Smash Brothers really wanted people to be interested in Fire Emblem. So, you know, he, he got Ma uh, Marth and Roy into Melee. Oh, it's Blazing mm -hmm. Sword. See, this is why we got people like Michael here, because he can correct me on this. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it was Blazing Sword. I know it was Blazing Sword and Binding Blade, and I think there was like one other one, if um, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, so anyways, Melee. But what was cool was um, the theme that was played, which I actually have a clip for it later on, is um, is from uh, the original game, but it's like a, like a cooler sounding one. And I think you'll remember it once I play it. So it'll be Sweet. cool. Um, so that's uh, that for our introductions. Um, and I've played Fire Awakening and I've beaten it, and it is a fantastic game. If I, 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 you probably and I would agree that if we wanted to introduce somebody to Fire Emblem, it'd probably be through Awakening. Um, yeah, I think so. I, I really do. Because it's such so an easy uh, game to pick up, <laughs> and it yeah. kind of it does carry it kind of holds your hand a little bit, but there is a point where you kind of have to figure things out on your own, and. Um, Mm -hmm. I think I think it would be a decent game. Now, with the unfortunate closure of the eShop, the only way you're going to play that game is through, uh, <clears throat> you know, yeah, emulation. And <laughs> it's, it, yeah. I was reading some comments from people uh, before, and I agree with them. It's like you know, Nintendo didn't have to do this. Remember what happened with Sony? Yes, you know, I, I know we're not trying to get off the topic too much, but Sony, they were like, they, people got so mad that they just kept the the shop open the playstation shop on vita but nintendo's yes. like we'll just close it down and people are going to go okay you know what's going to happen next yes you know you didn't care you you said this was closing down you don't care about support for the 3ds anymore i know it's been a number of years so fine so you know what people are going to do they're going to find out any kind of way they can to archive this stuff yes these games and whatever so people can play them for years and years and years Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> so it looks like we got my favorite um, punching down person here, Mr. Flaccid Phoenix, always uh, ragging on me for playing weeb stuff. Appreciate you coming uh, on by, though. <laughs> I think I've seen him around. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I like to also, before we get into like the meat of this, I like to give a little history, just a, a little bit, because I don't want to ramble on about it, but of just Fire Emblem when it comes to... Um, the games and like who created the music so mm -hmm. the first game in the series like i told you guys is shadow dragon the blade of light but it was on the famicom disc system and um and then the next one which is guiding which will be will, both of them will be listening to and then the latest game that came out of course was fire emblem engage which i live streamed and um it was actually really cool playing it because they brought back a lot of themes when you are playing with um those emblems in the game the the original characters so it's really cool to hear the original themes and, and songs from those games. But one thing that um, actually blew me away when I was doing some research was all of these, or excuse me, the first seven games, the music was in, was composed entirely by a single person. And uh, here, I got the slide here for it. So this, this uh, lady here, Yuka Tsujiyoko, she actually composed the music for the first seven Fire Emblem games to also include Paper Mario, which I'm playing right now, and I'm almost done with it, and the Thousand Year Door. And uh, I was, and I forgot. I know um, Paper Mario is made by Intelligent Systems, so that makes sense. But I didn't realize that Thousand Year Door was also made by Intelligent Systems, which is the developer that does uh, Fire Emblem. And then um, for the rest of the Fire Emblem games, she was more of like a supervisor. Um, she gets credited as a supervisor, so. Uh, Basically, I think it's um, Blazing Blade is the last game that she composed for. Um, or no, whatever we said earlier. Um, Alex corrected me. Or Michael, sorry. Michael corrected me. Yeah, Blazing Sword. Sorry. Blazing Sword was the last game she composed for. And then she just supervised. So that's impressive that she... It's not Koji Kondo <laughs> levels of composing because he's done so many different games, music. Hmm. But this one woman did seven games plus these two Paper Mario games. And she did other games as well, but they're not like super popular and people wouldn't really know them. So wow. um, props to her for making some iconic music that's lasted for many, many years now. 30, 30 years now, I think. Um, that's crazy. And yeah. what is her name? Her name, you would pronounce it Yuka Tsujiyoko. Tsujiyoko. Yeah, okay, Tsujiyoko, cool. yeah. Good. Um, and unfortunately, I like to put a photo so people can see their faces, but she's sure. like, I can't find a photo of her online. I don't know how uh -oh. she's hidden herself so well. She's a ghost. Yes. <laughs> but that's unfortunate. It is what it is. 
Um, so with that taken care of, we've got um, the history taken out of the way or done. So we're going to move right into the actual music. And so I did the format similar to the Castlevania episode where I've got clips lined up. We're going to watch these clips. We'll pause them and talk about the music. And then we'll, we'll look at the chat to see what the chat has to say as well. And uh, what I'm going to do is this. We're going to bounce back between the two different games. And I have some easy visuals, so you'll be able to know like which game we're talking about. So first, let's talk about the most important music in the game, which is the battle music, because that is what you're going to hear the most. And it repeats very frequently. So, And the battle music is actually what's um, the most iconic music from the game. True. So right here, I'm going to start us off with um, the Shadow Dragon battle music. And so we will play it. And um, like I said, Cash, you can tell me to pause it and we can talk about it so that we're not just watching the whole clip through without having to say any commentary. So here we go. So as you can see here, this is like the player's music that plays when they're moving their units across the map. It's a very simple right. melody. It's not too long, but it's a very simple me melody. I would still play this game even with these old graphics. I always laugh when people are like, dude, those graphics, man. It's like, <laughs> this game is so much more than that, but whatever. It is, guys. yeah. <laughs> I think they're not too bad. They're really not bad, in my opinion. I got used to them pretty quickly. Mm hmm. Um, this clip's a little bit longer, this first one. I, I didn't cut it down as, as short as some of the other ones, so my apologies on it. It's all good. So yeah, this is, uh, once again, Shadow Dragon, top left corner. You'll see the, the title. Cool. Now, this next one should be the CP, the computer player's music. Yeah, here we go. So whenever the computer player moves, this is the track you're going to hear. Yeah, I always uh, find it interesting when people play uh, turn-based games. It's like, no, you can't do that. You can't take that unit and put... No, stop that. <laughs> You've got to keep them together. It's not going to work. I'm going to tell yes. you guys right now, you can try, but it's not going to happen. I like this theme because um, this means you're about done with the map because you've eliminated enough enemies. So that mm -hmm. the theme changes, and if we um, cool. if we talk about it for a quick second, it has like a very like uplifting, like kind of um, victorious sound to it. I mean, the title says "Victory Near Nears," so it, it's not as like um, mellow as the first theme we heard, the very first one. So it's kind of cool. Like this one gives you kind of like a sense of encouragement. Like, all right, you've got most of the enemies done. So now it's on to the, the boss of the chapter and mm -hmm. whatever stragglers are hanging around. So I think it's a, it's a really way, a uh, nice way of, um, of uh, adding to the, uh, the gameplay, the music here. Mm -hmm. So another interesting thing is, uh, so with the first Fire Emblem game, there's only like five battle themes. And so the first theme, okay. the first thing we heard, you hear for like 90% of the game. And then this theme here, which is like the final map, is like, you, I think you only hear it in this final area, this last map of the game. Um, which, I mean, this was the first game in the series, so, like, they didn't really... I guess my guess is they didn't know how many how much uh, music to compose for. Plus, you know, there's limited memory storage and all that other jazz. But, uh, yeah, anyway, so this is what you hear at the end of the game when you get to, like, I think the final battle. Kind of adds, like, a little, like, um, dark tone, like... Like, okay, we're here. We're finally... We finally got to the end of this adventure. It's so good, though, man. It's just so good. Yes. But... Very simple, but very, uh, uh -huh. very good. Very effective. And this is, of course, while you're while you're playing, like you, the player. Mm -hmm. This should be the CP. Yep. Yeah, this is interesting because this reminds me of like. A little bit of Castlevania, like fast bit, piano yeah. notes, and mm -hmm. um, my my guess is you can probably swap out that like um, eighth sounding notes or quarter or sixteenth um, notes with like a harpsichord, mm -hmm. 
because you know mm. villainous tones are always played with like a harpsichord or an organ and um good point yeah it's really it's really cool i like it and again this is only in the final map like the last chapter of the game it's unfortunate you couldn't hear it like maybe the last few chapters because there was like two or three major boss fights in this game but you only hear this music in the end so it is what it is mm -hmm. All right, this is a good theme coming up. I like this one. Oh, my bad. Not yet. <laughs> we'll get to there. My bad. So this is the little jingle that plays while you're attacking. Nice. And you hear this like so many times because you're attacking like literally every, every, every chapter. So... And of course, the computer player's little jingle that plays when you when they're attacking you. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing how many years these have been, how long this has been around. It's like you buy one Fire Emblem game and it's more recent, something like Awakening. And then you find out, wow, this series has been around since like late 80s, early 90s. Like, geez. It's yeah. insane. It really is. Yes. <laughs> All right, this should be... Um... Yeah, this is a chapter boss theme, I guess you could say. It would be interesting to do a poll and see how many people actually like this music. I really think it would be pretty high. Uh, but I think Are they'd you... have to enjoy Fire Emblem, actually. I, 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 I don't... I don't know, but maybe they would just enjoy the music. But yeah, I, I can't hate any of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I would. I, I, uh, maybe while you're talking, I'll find the links to the playlist so people, if they want to listen to this music on their own, um, I can nice. put it in the chat. But uh, yeah, it's it's pretty interesting listening to it. All right, this is my favorite song. One of my favorite ones. This is the boss, like the final boss in the game. Yeah, so if we analyze that a little bit more, like it, so it starts off with the little like, doo -doo -doo -doo, like kind of mm -hmm. almost like spooky, because you're like, wow, this is the, because you're killing like a dragon, like this massive creature, like the size of it here doesn't even compare to what it, it's supposed to be in real life. Um, it's 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 a huge uh, monster, and so mm -hmm. you're going off against this giant monster, and it's a unique theme, and you've got like the um the falling notes moving up and down, which is Again, I think you can replace it with like a harpsichord or even an organ, and it would add more of like the intensity to it. Um, yeah, I like this theme. It's really unique. And then the little bit of the backbeat, I guess you can hear or the jump. I don't know what it's called, like a skip beat or something with mm -hmm. the drums. <laughs> so they did they did pretty well for this first game. Um, you'll see the evolution in the next game, but uh, I don't know if you have anything else you want to add to this. No, the yeah, I I agree. It's just. You know, the, the themes are always important for the battles, for the dialogue. You know, it, it's got to make you feel something because, of course, if we didn't have any music, obviously, it the game just wouldn't feel the same. So. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Pop, I'm sorry for the chat. I'm trying to keep up with you guys. So he says, just remember, all the music on the NES was done with MIDI, which mm -hmm. to me has a quaint and nostalgic sound to it. Yes, it I definitely agree. But what's interesting is this is Famicom. So Famicom has a different MIDI sound than the NES does. Um, and I found that out when I was doing the Castlevania episode and I accidentally started like uh, listening to Famicom Castlevania. And I was like, wait a second, this sounds slightly different. Um, I don't know if it's like a pitch difference or just the, the sound design is slightly different, but there is a difference. Um, mm -hmm. So it'd be really interesting to hear this music on an NES chipboard instead of a Famicom one. Uh, Michael D says, wait a minute, Marth was able to double him in the OG. I think Hard 5 broke my view of that game. <laughs> um, yeah, there was a, I think, yeah, there was a way you can crit him. Um, I've seen a lot of clips with that. Oh, my bad. Um, trying to scroll up here. 
Yeah, Lupa says eight bit F and slaps. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fire Emblem was great at having a lot of unique characters. That's what's really cool about it. Like your entire mm -hmm. army is unique. Uh, for the most part, no two unit is the same, except some of the original ones. There were some like slightly similar units. And then, what's this? We have a uh, wild Nerporeal here. <laughs> He's a, it's a wild and reporeal sighting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for swinging on by, man. Appreciate it. All no. right, let's uh, keep playing this. See, this might be the end of the song. I don't think there's anything else left. Mm -hmm. Can't remember. Yep. All right. So I was right. That that's it for um, Shadow Dragon battle theme or battle music. That's and cool. like I said, there's not a whole lot, but it's still like that music still um, iconic. Like people would be like, "Yeah, that's Fire Emblem," or or it's mm -hmm. a fighting style game, like a RPG style game. I don't. Th I mean, you can't put that over to Zelda style games or Mario style games. It just wouldn't really work. So, mm -hmm. um, but uh, let's see. Uh, um, Keep wanting to click on my YouTube screen. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Nerporeal. I've never heard of these series until GBA or GC. Still don't understand these games. Yeah, we uh, we mentioned earlier that a lot of people weren't introduced to it until um, the Game Boy games. Um, mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, Melee for um, for the Smash Brothers fans out there. And then... Uh, oh, and then let's see. Thanks for coming by, Angry Canadian. Yeah, I just popped in during his... Um, Star Trek stream. <laughs> I, I don't know who these guys feel, are. You guys don't visit anymore. Hey, hey, hey what's going on? <laughs> Listen, I'm not a big Star Trek fan, but I will come and sit and, and watch you and um, Prophet like just react to the clips or whatever because it's funny. Um, <laughs> so, um, so before we move on, what do you want to add to this uh, cash money? Well, like what something your Poriel said, if he ever wants to get into these games, he should play Awakening. But the, the one thing is that anybody who gets into these games, besides listening to the awesome music, I think it's awesome, um, is that you have to enjoy turn-based strategy. But there is a lot of dialogue. If you like art, certain RPG elements, this game has a lot to offer. Yes. And I think the very key thing you said is you have to like RPG. Um I like it to a degree, but but what really sold it for me is that this is a Nintendo property, and I'm a like I'm just a Nintendo diehard fan. I'm I'm not afraid of admitting <laughs> it to it. Um, but yes, you you do need to like RPG, and you do need to be able to sit through the uh, the long text. This game does not have a lot. This original one, but if you play a lot of these modern ones, like Awakening or Engage, mm -hmm. like there's a yep. lot of story to it, which is good yes. because it it does a lot of world building for you. Yes, it does. Let's yes. see. And um, and also oh. in these games you can you can actually have families, which is something I don't think you can have in engage, which is kind of disappointing. Well, more than kind of. I don't think you can have the family aspect in engage. They took that away. So I thought that was yeah. always really cool. Yeah, um uh, Gene Genealogy of the Holy War, which is another Japanese exclusive game, introduced that uh, family system. Mm -hmm. And then of course Awakening has it. Um I don't know about uh, uh, Michael here. Probably will be able to correct us if Fates had it. Um, of course, Engage doesn't have probably it. Which might have had right. Yeah, didn't. It? Yeah. But yeah, the family system was unique. That was a really cool thing that they put in there. Um, yeah, and Michael. Oh, actually, let me first. Um, Naporeal says Prophet's playing Shining Force. Is that similar? Mm, it's a dungeon crawler, but there is that turn base when you're you're fighting enemies. Yeah, and, and but it's all different the, still. Yeah, because uh, yeah, the way you different. move your units and mm -hmm. and uh, let's see. Oh, Michael says engage, not even allowing other characters to get S support. Is such an annoying exactly. thing. Oh, yeah, dude, that that surprised me. I was like, really? Like, yep. I can only give one character S support. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, says, it's. Oh, Fates is your favorite game? Okay, I haven't started it yet, but I'm going to, I need to one of these days. need to play more of that. Yeah, it's... My friend got into it. He's like, dude, I just can't understand Engage because they take things away. And where is this stuff? And 
he didn't like three houses and i haven't started it yet but i bought the collector's edition when it first came out and i will be putting hours into it i have a friend who put over like a hundred hours at <laughs> excuse me 100 hours into it oh wow um, it's you can put time and time and time into those fire Emblem games over but i think what nintendo should do is just give everybody the options that they had before in the other fire Emblem games i think yes. that would make a lot of people happy personally yes um just looking through the chat here oh so <laughs> this one is this one's oh. interesting so uh, they completely got rid of paired endings, a staple of the entire series, GBA mm -hmm. onward. It's so annoying. Yes, um, mm. that was something I did not expect, um, except for Engage. Engage has a paired ending with the one person that you get to give S support to. Mm. Um, but paired endings is really cool. And that's something we would have to talk about a different time because we're talking about the music here. But uh, yes. that's something unique to the gameplay of Fire Emblem. So yeah. Um, yeah, so without further ado, let's jump into Gaiden's battle music. And I actually have fallen in love with this music. Um, you'll see why it's very uh, unique and very... Um, it's actually a lot longer, like it's more composed. So mm -hmm. here we okay. go. Right here is where they change the like the um, the structure yeah. of the song. I guess it goes like slower. It becomes mm -hmm. it's really unique. Like this is a Famicom game, and they're like, we're gonna have this like really like fast pace, moving up and down the bar, and then we get down to this like more slow toned down, like kind mm -hmm. of like focused approach. Like we gotta focus on the enemy. Um, so I, I forgot to uh, mention this to the people watching. So Gaiden has you controlling. You're, you're playing two different people like they're on different sides of the world or different sides of the, the overall world so there's music created for this first character which is alm and then there's music created for um celica if that's how you pronounce her name i can't remember but she and so her music yeah, slightly different and his music awesome, slightly yeah. different oh that's mm -hmm. okay so celica yeah and um it, yeah, this music's amazing. Like people are sleeping on Gaiden, and I'm glad there's a fan translation because I will play the fan translation someday. Um, nice. All right, here we go. Tell so, me about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. Maybe I'll stream it. All right. So this should be part two. Oh, this is when he's fighting. Yeah, battle map 1-2. So this is like when you clear like over half of the enemies or or, or uh, three quarters of the enemies, the music becomes a little bit more faster pace and it's like pressuring you to like move on forward and like like hurry up and finish this chapter type of uh, feeling. But mm -hmm. it's still the same tune, like the same melody from the first one we heard. So I think that's kind of cool. Like they didn't have to completely change it. They just took the same one and added, uh, uh, made it a little bit faster. And I think a different pitch. It sounds like it's a different pitch as well. Yeah. Yeah, that is yeah, I love the change in the it's very cool. Once again, Famicom. I don't know how this would sound on the NES cartridge. I'm not sure. See that's just just a good change right there. Yes. In the music. Still slows down. Yeah, it's still. Uh -huh. yeah. It's really cool. Now, here's Celica. This is a theme everyone should be familiar with. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit of Nerd Foil. I, I, I do hear a little bit of Mega Man in there, you know. <laughs> Everything reminds him of Mega Man. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Yeah, this was in Melee, if I remember correctly. Or no, it was in Brawl. Sorry, this theme was in Brawl. They put this one in Brawl. But, like, that... Oh this is Celica, so she's, like, a mage. Um, like, more of a delicate, like, character and, like, very uh, graceful. But they have, like, this really, like, intense... It sounds almost... Um, like Middle Eastern, because if you listen to the original, or not the original, the Brawl version, hmm. it sounds 
the the um instruments they use in that have like castanets <laughs> so i guess not middle eastern that would be latin like they have castanets and they have like a like a string guitar playing like the uh, melody and Sweet. um i don't unfortunately i didn't make a clip of that i should have made a clip of that for this video but um that theme i originally heard in brawl and i didn't know it came from this game wow all right, so we should hear. Her yeah, everything line. just flows so well, though. It's just mm -hmm. even when they did the changes and the bridge, and uh, it's it's very good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this team is slightly different. Once again, it's the um, once you defeat enough enemies, and it's time to like finish the chapter. Yeah, so that that kind of was unexpected when I initially heard. I was like, "Oh wow, they they kind of took it a different direction with the um the music there." Um, <laughs> the reporter says it sounds like Ninja Gaiden. <laughs> I've uh, I've never played uh, those games, so I don't really know. Hmm. Nim Ninja uh, Gaiden, kind <laughs> of, kind of Nerd Porial Ninja Gaiden. <laughs> Yeah, Echoes is the uh, 3DS remake of these of this game specifically. Um, I have it. I haven't started playing it yet, but I am very yeah. curious to see how it sounds. I yeah, I have it too. I don't think I've uh, what game? It. I need to play it. What game has Roy, our boy from Smash? That would be the Blazing, oh. Blazing Blade. If, uh, uh, Burning yeah. Blade. My bad, Burning Blade. That's right. Michael's there to correct me, or Blinding. <laughs> I thought it was Burning Blade or Binding. Okay. okay. Anyways, Michael's the expert. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Let's Michael's keep put more time into Fire Emblem than both of us. Oh, well, yeah. I definitely. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. All right. This is uh, the final map. That's right. Kind of like a triumphant, like. All right, we're at the end. Time to give it all we got. I love that theme too. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh. All right. Um, yep, this is the uh, CP's theme, um, like their normal theme, I guess you could say. Sweet. That bassline's interesting. The um, it's very like a uh, low bassline. Kind of adds the little bit of the weightiness to um, the enemy units. Like, all right, these are the enemy units, so. They're going to be the the bad guys and maybe be a little bit more stronger than you. This would be um, Celica's enemy units that she has to fight. Yeah, very Castlevania. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He just. <laughs> uh... So this is interesting. Final map, computer player. Like, this is creepy sounding. Like, for a final map. And because you'll see the boss, you'll see a clip of the boss. The boss is like this weird, like creepy looking like dragon. It looks like a swamp monster. And so this theme works pretty well with um, with this final map and the boss that you're fighting. Yep.
Hmm. Oh, I'll just say goodbye to Norporeal. Thanks for swinging on by, man. Appreciate it. Yep. Talk to you oh. later, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that that theme is really cool. Um, very yes. creepy. The high pitch, yes. um, what strings, maybe if you were going to put it into a real instrument. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's very unique. Yeah. Well, it makes sense because the, the enemy should have some kind of evil dark tone tone music. <laughs> yeah. And, and like no. I said, if you, when we, you'll see a clip of, um, towards the end of this actual big video, you'll see the boss, the final boss, and you'll be like, okay, that makes sense why they went with this eerie sounding um, mm -hmm. track. Oh, look, we got a Godzillionaire here. We what do. Is up? What's up, dude? Yes, the Metro that, Prime around. remaster <laughs> is, the music is great. Yes, in that remaster. That game um, is definitely worth the forty dollars. I I have to say that they did a they did a very good job on that. And other people, let's release them all. Like some of these remakes are definitely worth it. So I would say that yes, if you're gonna spend money, buy that game. <laughs> if it, you don't, I, I there's other ways around it. But don't tell YouTube. No, I'm just kidding. But... <laughs> don't tell Nintendo. <laughs> don't tell Nintendo either. <laughs> Yeah, Michael knows what I'm talking about. Duma is his name, the boss. Um, we'll see him soon. But here's the... Okay, so now we listen to the map themes. This is the individual battle themes. And I actually really like the Gaiden's uh, battle themes. Um, so here we go. Yeah, that's cool. I like um, how there's yeah, I, a, 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 what do you call it, a key change halfway through, and it just repeats it, but it's still the same like a uh, couple bars. Go ahead. Yep they they want to make sure that you're you know because you are the hero in this game. Um, there there are some where you're going to decide if you're going to be the villain or maybe more neutral, maybe not even on one side with some of these different Fire Emblem games, but they definitely want you to feel like you're gonna kick ass so you gotta have that music <laughs> yes whatever it, it is if you're fighting the enemy or the enemy's talking or there's dialogue like it's just they they want you to always feel something and that's what i've noticed with a lot of the fire emblem games and i always appreciate that because we seem to have less and less of that nowadays where we don't really feel something when we're yep yes <laughs> i i like how Whenever you're playing these mm -hmm. games, they always, at least in the battle music, like the individual battle music, there's always a sense of urgency, yes. uh, which can kind of trick you because if you're not careful, these right. games uh, punish you if you rush through the chapters. Yes, they, they will do. punish you. So yes, they will punish you. But that sense of urgency, especially with the first game, knowing the story of the first game, um, you're, you're trying to uh, take back the your world that was conquered by the enemy. Um, I'm not familiar with the second story, but I know there's like an evil god that's about to re be resurrected. So you kind of need to go and like prevent that from happening, if I remember correctly. Uh, but yeah, that sense of urgency is very uh, it's a, a key um, tone for the game, I guess you can say, the series. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. All right, let's uh, keep watching this. Chapter boss theme. It's just called mid boss, but it's a chapter boss theme. It's cool. That is nice. They did give that variety. <laughs> yes. Do not hear the same song. All right, here's the last boss, Doma, or Duma. I think the translation's wrong. Oops. 
so, so cool. Yeah, once again, it adds that like creepy element to it um, while you're fighting him with the um, high pitch notes and the uh, mm-hmm. the, the weird um, the weird uh, echoing effect too that they had halfway through and um, uh, oh yeah, so uh, oops, my bad, this screen. Yeah, they made Duma this rotting dragon in it, in this, and it works for the story. And you can, yeah, it matches the the music matches it very well. Like this is creepy monstrosity that you got to fight mm-hmm. and put put to rest. Um, and I think there is one more. Yeah, there should be one more clip after this. So this is when you attack in the final map. Yeah, they just want you to feel like a badass again. <laughs> yep. Slightly faster, definitely a different pitch, higher pitch, or key change, I should say. And uh, yeah, that wraps up for the Gaiden music. So like I said, Gaiden music's really interesting. It, they they mm-hmm. definitely composed more, um, not only in quantity, but like the actual tracks themselves. They actually extended them and made them a little bit longer. And we're going to see some interesting tunes uh, later on. But uh, what are your thoughts on um, the guided music? I like it. I just I, I love how all the Fire Emblem music, but the guided you've got the it's it's evil, and then it, it changes, and then it then it goes to the basically like the hero music, mm, and yes. I. I really enjoy that. It just it makes you always feel like, all right, I'm I'm in this battle. It's going to be tough, but you're going to do it. And then when the evil music comes on, you're like, oh no, you know this is this could be trouble. Just, <laughs> that, that's how I look at it. You know, just it, it's very cool. Yes, I um I put it up on the screen already, but Michael makes a good point about how he thinks it works better in the OG than in the remake. Um, I. One thing I've been doing lately is I've been making shorts comparing older music with the remakes, like the newer music. And mm-hmm. so I'm very curious to play Fates, or it's not Fates, um, Echoes, which is the remake of Gaiden, and to mm-hmm. hear the music because it's, you know, better uh, engine to play like higher quality sounds. So, because um, he mm-hmm. says here, I guess he has a human form, um, which I guess it threw him off when he played it because he's supposed to be a rotting corpse of a dragon. Mm-hmm. So, in the future, I, I'm going to have to look into um, the music of Echoes and see how it compares. Uh, because Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon had a DS uh, remake or whatever, a port, I guess you can say. But it's like yes, updated it graphics. Yes, and um, mm-hmm. I didn't get a chance to listen to that music before we started this uh, episode. But uh, I remember playing it a little bit, uh, maybe several, several months ago. And yeah, I definitely remember the music sounding really more uh, composed, like orchestrated, I think, if I remember mm-hmm. correctly. And um there's some things that the chip tune sounds better at than like orchestrated can ever do. And, um, and that's because, you know, these composers worked within their limitations and they were able to pull off some pretty um, impressive uh, uh, musical uh, tones and tunes and stuff. So, um, so that takes care of the battle music and we're going to move on to um, now this is interesting. So, Shadow Dragon doesn't necessarily have an overworld. The overworld was kind of added in Gaiden. And then from that Hmm. point on, they added like an overworld where you're like moving around the map to the next battle. Um, You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about in um, when I show the clip, but for um, Shadow Dragon, there are some music that they created for the opening, like cutscene of the chapter. There's Mm -hmm. music created when you're talking to NPCs. And then, of course, there's music created um, like in random conversations you have with people. So without further ado, I'm going to play us the I just called it like Shadow Dragon other tunes because there isn't like a better term for it. But uh, anyways, here we go. So this is when you're talking to the villagers. Pretty much the same tune that plays for the villagers. very calm very simple relaxing music because you have to remember martha is a prince so it kind of has like like royal feel to it when you're talking to the the your village folk or whatever and so uh, i like the theme it's kind of cool simple yeah yeah i do i like that theme too oh hold on a second before i go on yeah we got a special person here Uh (laughs) what is up nosferatu 
Let's see. You didn't hear for yeah. person's five music. You definitely, <laughs> you definitely did a typo there. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, yes, we don't did. persona. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Um, uh, oh, sorry, Michael here. Yeah, the overall shows up here and there. You can only choose where to go in some games. Yes. Um, I like. You'll see why. Uh, guided music's overworld is is really cool. But uh, let's uh, keep going. This is a famous theme. People will remember this tune. Yeah, so uh, what are your thoughts on that? Because you've definitely recognized this tune. I mean, this is pretty, uh, what do you call it, like a staple for this game, at least Shadow Dragon. Yeah, I've, the thing is, like, I haven't, what was it? You can buy it on Nintendo Switch, I think. I, I think, or was that only a limited time? It was only for a year, yeah, a single a year, you're able to buy this game. <laughs> Find another way, but yeah, no. Like it's just, it's it's just good because you're you're seeing the the banter between the two characters, and it's getting intense. And when the I think when the certain words when they're talking about the battle or they're talking about something that's important, it starts changing. Would you agree that it, yes. it changes? <laughs> yes, it it's a good um. Uh, what do you call it? Like, like, uh, how, so every time you're in that situation, it's always like a briefing, like, a, like, I don't want to sound military, but it's kind of like a military briefing. So, um, like you're getting this debrief of like, what's happening in the area. Well, all these pirates came in and like took over like this area and they're threatening the village or like, um, the main dudes, uh, the main army that you're trying to defeat, they're like in the area too. So you're getting like this briefing from the villagers or from like your peers or like, the previous person you helped out and so it kind of really um drives home the tone of like urgency like all right we're here to defeat the enemy here's the game plan like pre-game music mm -hmm. i guess or pre um uh what, like the huddle <laughs> like huddle music <laughs> i don't know how else to describe it but uh <laughs> yeah it's it's cool yes. um Hey, oh, before i go we better say hi to steven ransom what's up man i always appreciate you uh swinging on by always he's, helping people out <laughs> he's just like i'm in another stream but i want to tell you guys but i'm here too man <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. steven sneaky man. man sneaky very <laughs> sneaky dude yeah <laughs> yep this is when you uh beat the chapter you get like a congratulative like theme so like carry you out of the chapter and this is another famous theme that everyone should know basically when you talk to like a, a recruit when you're going to recruit somebody So that theme, that was in Melee, and we'll see a song here later about that. But uh, what is uh, Nas spouting here? I don't know. <laughs> what are Match you dragons. Come on, man. They can't wait before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoops, not the night bot. Wow, okay. Uh, I don't know wow. what to say there, this... but that's interesting. <laughs> anyway, so that, yeah, Encounter. That is what uh, was introduced into Melee. And um, pretty much what everybody knows of Fire Emblem is this song, or that song specifically. So let us go to the last one. I think it's the last clip. Oh, no, there's more. My bad. This is your favorite. Yeah, this is one of my favorites. This is the opening theme. Dun, dun, 
It's just great. Yes. It just is. All this music is great. And I'm going to have to find a way to play a lot of these games. <laughs> I really, I've got about five or six, I think. Mm. So. Yeah, this, I like this theme because it gives you like a uplifting, heartwarming type of yes. uh, feeling to it. Because if I'm not mistaken, this is towards the end of the game. It's, um, whenever um actually this lady that you see on the screen here um you kind of help her kingdom out by eradicating the enemy so you have this like dialogue with her and um, of course this is the theme of fire emblem that's playing i mean if mm -hmm. like it's legit the theme of fire emblem of all the fire yes, emblem games so yep. um yeah it's a really cool theme it's definitely uh it was definitely well composed to be yes. um, stuck in people's minds <laughs> yes it was This is a good one, the Victory Fanfare. Definitely has the uh, military march, you know, fanfare theme to it. Because you just defeated the, the people in that chapter, so... It's cool, I like that, yeah. Yeah, I hear the military march too, yes. Like they're I going like, up the hill, or <laughs> yes, I like the bass how it drops down an octave, like din 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 din. Like it adds more to the um, yeah, to the march of it. Yes, so Anna Anna can be a Michael. You would probably agree. Anna, she's pushy, man. It's like no, I don't want to buy your stuff today. <laughs> yeah, leave yes. me alone, Anna. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> she and, makes you uh, feel bad too in the games. Oh, don't you? You know, yes. we need to buy this because we got to help with the military. And you're like, ah, you know. <sighs> it almost sounds like a Dragon Quest feel. Um, Dragon Quest is one of the games that I'm, I am going to do a show on because uh, my buddy uh, Dempsey, Drunken Poet, he's a huge Dragon Quest fan. And so I want him to, like, share his love with uh, Dragon Quest and the music oh, specifically. Man. So Dragon be Quest is great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, one more thing before we move on. <laughs> I gotta point this out. I've never been more annoyed with her than in three houses. Glad she's regulated to posh screen in most games. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I thought they I thought they did her dirty and engaged. They made her like a kid. Like, Ugh. come on, man. Yeah, like that's... I didn't want a kid. Like give me an like an adult for crying out loud. Yeah, I I think there's just a lot of stuff they they should go back to with. Uh, I, I'll play engage, I guess sometime. I just I wasn't what I read and what I saw. I was like I wasn't overly impressed. And they're like, we're bringing back the old Fire Emblem characters. I'm like, oh boy, I'm so excited. Let's have some <laughs> a lot of new blood. Can we have that? That are interesting. Yeah, yeah one of these days, uh, maybe I'll do a live stream talking about it because I I liked the game. I really enjoyed it, and I liked a mm -hmm. lot of the characters. And I was very skeptical at first, only because mm -hmm. like three houses kind of um, pushed me away, like scared me off. So I could mm -hmm. probably get you to like engage. I'll have to find a way to convince <laughs> you. <so. laughs> Let's see. Uh, uh, Kid Anna is fine. She's cute. I'm more annoyed that Anna doesn't get any support uh, in yes. three houses. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. This should be the shop themes. Yeah. This theme's annoying in my opinion, but it's the same like four bars just repeated over and over again. Uh, yeah. This you hear this uh, music in uh, Awakening as well. Yeah. Yep. So that's it. That's your armory, your bank, or the the convoy in the any village. And the magic shop theme is basically the same, but a little bit more um, lighthearted, and it fits the tone of like the woman in the picture there, <laughs> kind Definitely. of uh, mysterious. Then of course you got your arenas, your arenas in the game. Um, 
don't know if the music's the same when you're fighting or if it's a different song that plays, but this is when you're talking to the NPC. But that's it for um, Shadow Dragon. Like I said, Shadow Dragon doesn't have a whole lot of like other themes or other tunes when it comes right. to um, non-battle music. But Gaiden, Gaiden is amazing. I think you're going to love it too. So mm -hmm. uh, before, actually, before we go on, what are your thoughts on uh, some of the outside music for uh, Shadow Dragon? Uh, I, I mean, I, I like it all. It just, it flows well. I, I like when music actually flows well and you, you actually feel that you're in the scene, which of course I always feel like music should, should be there, you know, to, to link that into the scene. And then you feel like you're thinking about it in your head, oh, I'm going up a mountain or I'm fighting in a castle or I'm fighting a dragon or something like that. Yes. Or yes. the music when you're in the village and yes. you're buying something, dun, 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 dun. you know, just something like that. It, it just, it makes you like, Oh, okay. Well, if I don't buy something right, or you, you feel like you're in a bazaar, or you, you haggle too much. You, that doesn't happen in there, but there is one game that I know where you, if you hit the haggle too much, you go, doo, 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 and the bazaar <laughs> closes down. <laughs> That's funny. That's it is funny. funny. It's very funny. Yeah. Um, welcome, Alex. He's another uh, Fire Emblem fanatic. Thanks for uh, swinging on by, dude. Um, yeah, as I, I mean, as we saw earlier, we we got to hear the main theme of Fire Emblem, the main tune, uh, the melody, and uh, that's important. And uh, yeah, it's it's cool. Um, let's see, he's multitasking, and then what's this? Just looking at a lost item list while listening to anyway. Yeah, this music is good, dude. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Alex is on the three houses grind. <laughs> yeah, good luck, dude. <laughs> uh, all right, guidance music. Let's go. I think you're gonna enjoy this. So real quickly, like, what does that remind you of? Because it kind of reminds me of Zelda. Uh, it ri reminds me of Zelda a little bit. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It, it reminds me of any time that you just had this, like, somber music when there's, when there's like, gravestones around or uh, there. it's just – there's, like, little uh, – I'd say, like, grass around, but it's just, like, a more you, – you just want to feel – you want to just uh, lay down and take maybe. a nap. Yeah, you want to take a nap or <laughs> or just feel cleansed or, you know, it doesn't, you don't want to, because it, it feels like it could be a sad area. So mm. you, you just want to feel that you're just, just relaxed more, you know, yes. even though somebody died here or whatever, that's the music I get, something from Zelda or, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, to give a little context to this area, and the guys in the chat can correct me if I'm wrong, in this game, if you want to promote your characters, you have to go to these, like, shrines. Hmm. And the shrines, like, there's one on either side that you, like, uh, pray to, and that's how you could prom promote your character. Uh, there's probably some, like, prerequisites you need to unlock first, but... Um, so this area is a shrine, so, like, this lighthearted, like, airy sound to it is in the shrine area, and it works really well. Um... That's yeah, cool. Michael says, yeah, alter promotions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it's it's really neat. Like I said, this music and guidance is it knocked me off my feet. I think I cut the clips a little long in this one because it, they're a little bit more composed out, so mm -hmm. This is when you're going to the shrine. There's like a little theme that plays. It's not too long because you kind of run through it really quickly. Hmm. Um, yeah.
Oh, I guess I could have clipped this a little shorter. <laughs> it's the same, like, it's four fine. bars. <laughs> I think this theme specifically plays when it was Celica, and it's just uh, another version of that first one that we heard. It's like when you uh, go into the churches, like in yes, um, Dragon Link Quest, for example. Yes, mm -hmm. have that like organ type music kind of thing going on. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, it adds a little. There's a little grace to it. There's a little yep. of like like royal type feel to it. Um, yeah, it's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this one was pretty. I liked it. It was very comforting. The music's different when it's outside. I just wanted to let it extend some more. <laughs> This track is only in this area of the game. When I was looking for it, if I remember correctly, um, it's very weird. It sounds Castlevania-ish, uh, but yeah, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. A second, what, what is Nas doing here? I miss when Angry Canadian was a mild manner Canadian. What are you talking about? I'm not angry right now. <laughs> uh, Nas, all right. Yeah, so this thing is interesting. It, it plays when you're in these like village sections. Um, it sounds almost dreadful, which is weird because a lot of times it's you don't really get you don't have that atmosphere. But right. yeah, it's interesting. It's not my favorite one, but it is interesting. And like I said, this, or what I put up there, this is the world map. So when you're in the world map. second part of the song. Yeah, so I wanted to include the whole, like, the main sections of the song. So I like this theme, the overworld map theme. It's got, like, two little um, uh, melodies, different melodies in it. And it gives you, like, that sense of adventure. Like, you know, we're off to go and... Uh, meet up with this person and go take on this uh, enemy. Um, and like I said, uh, he, Alm has his own theme and then Celica has his, her own theme and we'll hear it here in a second. Uh, what do you think about this one, uh, Cash Money? Yeah, I like it. Uh, there's always that upbeat theme whenever you have some castle they've in Final Fantasy or even this game, um, even um, Zelda. I, I like that. It always just makes you feel like you're. Th there's obviously something important going on here. Yes. Yes, I I uh, I like that. Always <laughs> there's always something important because you got to save the world or you got to get rid of like some mm -hmm. uh, local bandits or something. Yes. So. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see what this next one is. 
Yep, Selicus. Yeah, so it's cool that um like I think I mentioned it earlier when we listened to the battle music, like Alm has a very like strong um like uh yeah, strong and, uh, and cur courageous type feel to it, the music. And then Celica is more graceful, more delicate, more um mm -hmm. uh not I wouldn't say royal, but it's, it's just more graceful and delicate. And uh, it just shows the difference between the two characters that you're playing as because maybe if you're playing for the first time, you're like, Why am I bouncing back like I'm bouncing back between two characters. Like, how am I going to remember who's who? But the music kind of helps with that. So I think that was really smart of them to uh, make the they, they had no choice, I think, to make the music different for both of these characters. Yep. Yeah, I just I don't. It's a cool. It's just a cool theme. You know, it doesn't. It doesn't even really have to mean anything. It's just a cool theme. It seems to. to yes. Fit. <laughs> now. Uh, this theme it says liberation each road, so I don't know if this theme plays for both characters. The people in the chat can let me know. Um, but this is a good. I like this one. You'll you'll understand. Oh, this theme is interesting. You're gonna like this. The tone changes. So yeah, give me your thoughts on that. It's really cool. Um, I, I don't know the specific story in that section because I, like I, I haven't played the game, but I would imagine it's because something bad has happened or you're getting close yes, to the end. Yes, that's how I feel too. So there's there's worry around, you know, something's going to happen. Yep. But it's interesting how like the first half of the song has like this kind of um, dread feel to it. Like, okay, something bad's happened and like, uh we didn't see it coming or like we lost somebody but then like halfway through the tone changes and it becomes more like i feel like it's like a determined type tone like all right well we messed up but we're gonna like try our best to not let something like that happen again and we're gonna keep pushing forward because we got a world to save and i kind of feel that from like that second um uh second uh which we call it uh, half of the song um mm -hmm. Let's see. Michael here says, "No, nah, that leads to a happy scene that goes bad." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're close. <laughs> All right. This is opposite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for that. That's good. Yeah. Let's see what this next one is.
So that one, um, Sir Michael or Alex can provide context. But uh, yeah, it said it said reunion and then. So something. Um, it sounds like it's leading to something negative that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. But it has that kind of like, oh, yes. we've been we've been separated for so long type of atmosphere to it and uh mm. now we're finally together i think um there's a little bit of a romantic story to this game because um the alm and, and selica are like from two different kingdoms and um i think if i remember correctly there's an- animosity between those two kingdoms or like they have to like merge together and um and i think they know each other from their childhood if i remember correctly too i don't know uh i'm gonna probably get blasted by uh michael and alex but uh yeah. So, anyways, when they meet each other, it's like kind of like a heartwarming thing, and um, obviously they get they end up getting married. I think in the end of the game, but uh, anyways, it's a nice, pretty theme. Um, I like it. Mm-hmm. Yep, little royal theme, royal style to this track. This should be the last track, actually. So that about does it for the overworld themes of Gaiden. And, um, oh yeah, so here we go. Michael's here to set the record straight. (laughs) So the childhood friends that got separated and ended up liberating two halves of the continent at the same time for separate reasons. Okay, interesting. that's, that's correct. Yeah, that's making sense now. So, um, yeah, appreciate the save there. And like I said in the chat, if you're wondering what the what's the deal with the track names, those are that's what I've pulled from the album listing. Um, I'm trusting they're correct because that's what they're from the album listing. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, so what are your thoughts on um, the Guidance uh, Overworld themes? I, I like it. There's like the formal themes. There's the theme where you're going to. Uh, maybe see an old friend or maybe you're there, you know, you feel betrayed there. There's a theme where you feel worried or you're scared or it sounds like it's happy. And then it changed to this tune. So there's something big coming, uh, something bad, something evil. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, a lot of good themes. Yeah. I think it, this game does a good job covering a wide range of emotions. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially with the music and and the composer did a fantastic job writing these emotions into musical pieces and they were able to add even more because they they understood the hardware they were working with and maybe they could squeeze in uh like more into the memory so uh mm-hmm. yeah i i like i told you from the beginning i really like the guidance like overworld themes um, it's great it's man. really I mean, good it's really it's yes. completely different from shadow dragon which is really cool yes all right so the i have two more clips left to play before we get into like the discussion and so the ending scenes for these games now they're really long so i'm not i didn't clip the entirety of the ending tracks because um the ending scenes usually have two uh for any video game there's like two um long tracks that they play so what I decided to do is I took the first half of those ending scenes and I combined them together and you'll see. So um, there, it's not too terribly long of a clip, but normally for ending uh, credits, like end credit music, it's sometimes it's a completely new track, like something that um, that's not in the game, or sometimes it's a culmination of the themes that you heard in the game. And uh, I'm drawing a blank now what it is for these games, but we'll give it a listen. Yeah, so this is a uh, ending parade, pretty much a rehash of the Fire Emblem mm-hmm. theme. A little bit more lighthearted because you've beaten the game and now like your journey's done. You're, you've eradicated the enemy and you've brought peace to the world. So 
very elegant. So that is the uh, first part of Shadow Dragon, and here's Gaiden. Oh, sorry, before I continue this, one thing that's unique about Fire Emblem is you get these, like, character cards at the end of the game, and it tell they kind of give you, like, a this is what happened to them after you beat the game mm -hmm. situation. Like, they went off and did it's this, cool. or they went and did this, and it's kind of unique. I've never really seen it in any other game. Um, and uh, Michael mentioned it before that there's like couple endings. So if you play um, Awakening, for example, and you marry people together, mm -hmm. you will see um, yes. like both of them together and their adventure together, like whatever they did afterwards together, which mm -hmm. is really cool. Yep. So that takes care of at least the first part of the uh, the end credits. And the reason why I only show the first part is because I actually used um, the second part of Shadow Dragon's end credits for the outro of this uh, live stream. So I didn't want to spoil it right off the bat. But uh, yeah, so for end, end credits, um, I would encourage you to go look them up. Uh, you'll see what the deal is with um, Shadow Dragon. Shadow Dragon's cool. It's actually called... Um, the, the track list is called like Omnibus, so it's like all of these like themes slapped together, and uh, it works really well. Like how they slapped them all together um, with Gaiden, I think it's um, slightly similar. Um, a lot of the themes that they just slapped all together, but it flows really beautifully. So it's not like it doesn't sound like it was cut and pasted and cut and pasted into it. Um, but yeah, so that's that's it for um, all the music from these two games. And uh, well, mostly all the music. There's a couple stuff I left out because they're like mm -hmm. either not interesting or they're just like too short to really talk about. Um, yeah, we get that. But uh, before we finish the music stuff, let's let me show you guys um, a clip of the music that everyone should be pretty familiar with, and that is from Smash Brothers. So I recorded this from. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't record from the original game because I didn't really want to set it all up. So this is from Ultimate. Which is a lot easier to record. <laughs> Three, one, There's Marth and Roy. <laughs> yep, the original characters from Melee. say it on there too, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for our blind audience out there. Yes. Uh. But yeah, this is uh, Encounter, if I remember correctly. And uh... but yeah, this is this is a good way, you know. You record this um, with like OBS or something else, and then you this would make sense to put CPU because you're you, you're just showing your an example of something. Though it's funny that some streamers do like CPU versus CPU. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not very interesting. Like, there needs to be a point to it, man. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I wasn't gonna play this live and like just embarrass myself in Smash. Cause I'm way out of practice these days. Here we go. This next part's important. So they mix two songs into this one track for Melee. Here comes the theme. <laughs> yep. Very not cool. sure why the audio was uh, lower on this clip. That's a, a oopsie on my end. <laughs> yeah, Roy is goaded. I like Roy. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's weird. I have this game on. Uh, I bought this on Switch, then I bought this before on 3DS, and I think I'm gonna have to put some serious hours into it. Yeah, dude, it's a blast. And what's really. I wanted to use Smash because Smash Brothers Ultimate is the largest. It's one of the largest, if not the largest, video game, like, music collection for a game. Like. You have all these franchises, and you have all of their mu like not all, but a lot of their music attached to this game. There's like 15 plus songs like Fire Emblem music in this game. It's ridiculous, and then uh, that's just Fire Emblem. So I wanted to utilize that as a source, like as a resource. Very cool. But I'm a sucker. I bought. I have all three versions of this game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure why StreamYards has terrible frame rate for this, but it is what it is. Hmm, it could be worse. It's pretty good. That max hit, crit hit. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that was the original melee theme. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People cheering for Roy. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know, I, I just, I just always find it funny that people think. Uh, I mean, they can do whatever they want on their channels, but I, I just find it funny when they're like, "Hey, we're gonna put CPU and CPU. That'll get me views and stuff." It's like, dude, just, just play the game, please. Is that okay? Yes. <laughs> Yes. Like there has to be a good purpose for you to do CPU versus CPU, and showing the music that's that's a good purpose. So. Nas, no, so if we were talking about the Shrek soundtrack, then uh, yes, I would definitely bring up Smash Mouth. Fantastic <laughs> Shrek soundtrack is a fantastic soundtrack. <laughs> uh, and uh, not a whoop over here spitting bars. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, uh, yeah, so. That's where everyone pretty much heard Fire Emblem was from Melee, and uh, that original theme uh, still sticks to me this day, and um, it's really cool. I like it, and uh, Brawl brought out some more Fire Emblem because they put Ike in that game, and they added um, a map, and they added more themes from uh, um, Path of Radiance. Cool. And um, anyways, yeah, it's really cool. But uh, yeah, so that's it for... Um, for the music and uh, actually i forgot to use this banner here i made this banner i completely forgot about it but oh well <laughs> so i got this banner so this is the this is the final third of the show and this is where i'm just going to ask questions and we're going to talk about the music try to talk about more in depth if we can there's no pressure if you can't think of anything uh smart to say <laughs> but um i just have some interesting questions and I, i'm updating them as I uh, as I live stream these just to see if I need to change them out. But so first one is, how do you think the style or the tone of this type of, of the music in this game, how do you think it fits with like the overall uh, genre of this franchise? It, it fits well because it just, you, you think in your head, you, I feel, well, this is for me personally, but you have these images of your head <clears throat> after you hear the music that you're going up a hill you're fighting a battle like uh you know we kind of talked you you're you're sailing on a ship and it's just the music just always fits with whatever situation you're in if you're in the castle if you're um fighting a battle if you're on a boat uh if you're in the village it just all makes sense like there's a certain tone for the like the bizarre music and it just it always gels well i can't say there isn't anything in those games that i've seen that doesn't gel well that doesn't connect yes i i think what's interesting and i can't um at the moment i can't comment on the music of engage because i need to listen to it some more but when it comes to these first two games um there's definitely like a medieval style theme uh, when it comes mm -hmm. to the music, mm -hmm. and that's what Fire Emblem is about. It's midi, it's fantasy, medieval fantasy genre, yes. and um, it's battling. So you gotta, you have to make music that is that type of uh, tone. And yes. I think 
it fits really well. It does um, a good job, like you said, where it doesn't matter what situation you're in, whether you're in battle, overworld, even in the shop. Um, it there's there's a specific message that the music is trying to convey to you, and this single composer, I think, does an absolutely fantastic job with that. Um, I mean, these Nintendo composers, they're really good at what <laughs> what yes. they do. So, um, yeah, that's great. Now, uh, this might be a little tricky, but I'm curious. How does this music compare to other franchises that are similar? So an example of that would be uh, Dragon Quest or Final Fantasy. Um, those are the top two I can think of top of my or head. Or Zelda. Or Zelda. Certain but Zelda, yeah. Yeah, certain things. But when it comes to like RPG, if mm-hmm. we specifically talk about RPG, turn-based RPG games, how do you mm-hmm. think it compares to these other franchises? The, all the... All the music seems to fit. I mean, even if you look at how great the music is in like the original Final Fantasy VII, I haven't paid an, close enough attention to the remake yet. If the music is just as great, but um, it's just it's always the different situations, and they're always going to make you feel something. Which once you le- lose that feeling, then the game is just not. I just feel it's just not as interesting. The yeah, music needs to add so it. much. Exactly. The the uh, that's why I love the fact like the Dragon Quest series has not really ever changed. And even Treasures, where you've got little Eric and you have his sister uh, Mia, I think it is. Like it's still a good game, and the music is still so good. It's it's good. The game is good. I I don't think it's sixty dollars good, uh, but it's <laughs> it's a good game. Um, you, you just, you need to feel that music. So when there's an intense moment, boss fight, something evil's happening, something's bad happening to a character, um, yeast is the same situation. You want that, that music. So you're, you're really feeling like, wow, this is a dire situation or this is a happy situation, for example. Yes. Uh, real quickly before I comment on that chat, you can also answer these questions because I would mm-hmm. like to hear specifically people that have played these games and what they think about the music. So feel free to answer in chat and I'll, I'll read your answer out loud. Um, yeah. So when it comes to comparing them, when, uh, well, I've listened to a lot of these music, so I can kind of, I can pretty much tell the difference between them. I think pretty quickly. So if you, if you gave me final fantasy, I'd be like, yeah, that's final fantasy because final mm-hmm. fantasy has more of a super, super fantasy feel to it like fire Emblem's not yes. super fantasy like there's right. magic and there's dragons but like yes. you don't have like these crazy enemies you know like these weird looking enemies or like right. these wild looking enemies like final fantasy does and uh i'm not super familiar with dragon quest but like the music or the the gameplay there it's like swords and magic and there's like weird yes. looking enemies as well or weird looking characters so like that music sounds uh I wouldn't say whimsical, but it's like a completely different tone. Whereas, I don't know, Fire Fire Emblem comes to me more grounded, at least the older games. Um, I don't know about some of the newer ones, but uh, I, yeah, I just think um, it sounds more authentic and more realistic than like Final Fantasy or like Dragon Quest would. That's just my opinion. Hmm. Um, But it, it still, it still holds its, it can still hold a candle to like, a lot of these other big genres out there as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, but uh, yeah, real quickly, let me uh, take a look at the chat. Um, let's see. Let's see. Guided music is better than Shadow Dragon. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And of course, Nas is always here <laughs> spouting out DOS X. <laughs> yes, I will play it, Nas. I will play it. I'll let you know how is it goes. It, is it DOS X or is it Deus X? I've heard oh, so much Deus, Deus X. I don't, I don't know if I, I think it's Deus X. It might be DOS, DOS X. I don't know. They, <laughs> they say different things. Whatever the developer says, I always go with that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly either, but um, yeah, I'll play it. Um, all right, so uh my one of my final questions is how has this music impacted you when it comes to your gameplay experience and or how did it impact your life like how does this music impact you personally well i mean it's just i always ever since like i was growing up i 
I always had these these visions of stuff, uh, you know, coming up with imaginary this and imaginary that. So, like, even when I was in college and I did music, like, I would probably say that these games that the music I heard from Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, uh, and even Fire Emblem, like, probably impacted how I wanted to, my sounds to be, uh, how I needed wanted the how it's going to start off and it's going to have a certain tone to it. Like if I was doing a project in college and I needed to make music and I use like garage band, uh, for example, like I wanted it to have like this classical tone because I was in a script library, for example, and it's just, that kind of made sense to me. Okay. Yep. I, I understand. Actually I can connect with that because uh, I'm think I'm pretty sure I'm younger than you. And, uh, when I, yeah, when I, when I was like, not even a teenager when I played Melee, so I was still in that kid phase of like running around outside and like imagining stuff. So like hearing the Fire Emblem theme, or at least the, the Melee one, like mm -hmm. just pretending that I was Marth outside running around with a sword and like that theme is stuck in my head. Like, um, that music has stuck with me for many, many years and I'm sad that I wasn't able to experience some of the other games and other mm -hmm. musics until I was an adult, because that would have really cemented my love for Fire Emblem at a much earlier age. But uh, it's amazing how well it can affect me now, just listening mm -hmm. to it now. Um, and the, I mean, this isn't Castlevania, but in the Castlevania episode, when I was doing research for it, um, like that music kind of changed me because I've never really played Castlevania. So oh. when, when I played it and I was listening to the music, I was like, Holy cow, this has been like sleeping on me for so long. Like this is this, I can understand why people like Dempsey have a huge passion for that music. And, um, and as people like you who have a huge passion for fire and blood music and other people in the chat as well. Like uh, if good music is composed and, and written a certain way, it will definitely stick with you than bad music because i mean there's bad music yeah. out there that people meme about and joke about but um music like this definitely can affect your creative uh your creative um mind and help you to like really um i mean you said like uh did you ever listen to this type of music while you're like just writing stuff or like working on projects because i did a um lot. not usually i probably I listened to it later like when i was uh playing a, a game when I was playing the game and stuff, but it just, it, it, it gave me ideas. Um, and then from those ideas, I started creating stuff like GarageBand, even if you're playing guitar or you took piano, um, these ideas start popping into your head. And that's why I've always said to people that we need to push for more and more people to be, find their creative side and build something. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I I think, um, especially with music like this, this will help you with that. Um, there's something about listening to non-vocal music that helps you to focus on whatever you're working on. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is amazing. And uh, let's see, I got people <laughs> trolling. No, I swear, man. I'm, I'm reading these comments. I see that. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me catch up with this. So... Yes, Dulce X is shocking to play in modern times. It's just red pill after red pill. Yes, you have, you are like the the herald of uh, Dulce X, the, the the galactic herald of it. Yes, I'm taunting people with my overflowing Rockley youth. <laughs> um, no, I will not play Nickelback while I play Emblem. <laughs> The, the only album that I really liked of Nickelback was their first one, and then they changed their style, and I just never liked it as much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Spring Time of Youth. <laughs> He's hoping the fifth gate. Oh, you're <laughs> wild. Das is wild now. Um, all right, so the last question I'm going to ask you, and uh, people in the chat can answer too about Emblem, Fire Emblem, is what are your, some of your favorite points? I guess you can answer this whether it's the game itself or the music. I'll let you choose, or you can answer both. It's fine, like before we wrap it up. <laughs> All right. So you would like to know what some of my main points are or what? Yeah, give me your I closing. Like to... Yeah, you can okay. give me your closing I... thoughts on Fire Emblem and the music I... too. I mean, the music helps the the story as any music should 
whether it's stuff you play from Dragon Quest or other games, but just with Fire Emblem, it's uh, you. The music is great, but it's also I just like the micromanaging. If you like micromanaging, you're gonna like Fire Emblem. If you like the RPG elements, the music just of course adds to it. But if you like the RPG elements, you like even they have a difficulty where your characters can actually die and not come back. Like it just, it's so challenging. And so I, I would feel like if people are going to play fire emblem, they should play awakening because I don't think they should start with a game like engage. I don't think engage is bad from everything I've seen. I probably still need to play it, but I just think it's an easier version of what we got before. And I would rather have the more challenging version. Yes, I agree. Um, engage. Uh, let's see. I mean, so you start off pretty strong, overpowered, and then halfway through you lose it. So that's kind of cool. But if you want a more like rooted story with, um, I, I think Awakening is definitely a good choice. It's it's definitely a good one. And uh, with the story and the music itself, but the gameplay, it's not too hard. I don't think it's that difficult for new people. Engage is really easy to play as a new person. But if you want a slight more mm -hmm. challenge, Awakening, I would have to say Awakening. Um, mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. Yeah, there's there's always a learning curve too. Like If you want a game that has a learning curve, there is a bit of a learning curve in Fire Emblem. You don't... People probably make a, the big mistake is they just go in there and they're going to be so super strong and this and that. No. You need to build up your units and that can be fun too they just it depends if you like that micromanaging again and you like you can have characters have conversations and then within the conversations their support becomes stronger i love stuff like that that is really cool yes um it it really helps you it, it lets you um, build a deeper bond with the characters in the game because there's so many characters in every single Fire Emblem game. There's like, what, 40 to 50 unique characters that you can use in your army. It, it might not be 50, but it's like 40. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. And yes. the fact that you have, there's like 40 unique dialogue, 40 unique designs, uh, mm -hmm. you know, weapons and stuff. And then, or, or not weapons, but uh, class abilities. And then, of course, they add the support conversations and it allows you to have like that unique um, personal f touch or uh, connection, yep. sorry, with them. That's what is really cool about Fire Emblem that I think mm -hmm. you miss out on in games like um, Final Fantasy. I I'm not entirely sure if they have that type of system. Uh, and then you can answer to Dragon Quest. I don't know if Dragon Quest has something similar to that. Well, Dragon Quest has a is a silent protagonist, but I still think it works well. So all the characters, they they there's a lot of conversations. They talk to you about stuff. Some of your characters even become evil because bad things do happen. I can tell you that. And they're not people do die in Dragon Quest. It's not a happy time always. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> yeah. Um I will say that uh if you want to talk about a specific Fire Emblem game that is very unique, it would be Fates because you get to choose like three different paths yes. in that game. Yes, you do. Which mm -hmm. is like ridiculous because then you play through like an entire different game between those three different paths. And um, yeah, that's something cool that is, uh, I don't, I can't think of any other game that's really done something like that where it's like, hey, uh, you're going to play through three different games. So when you get to a certain point in the base game, you got to choose which path you're going to go down. So, mm -hmm. yep. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, Mr. Uh, Poke Pokemon himself. <laughs> right, <it's still> like <laughs> yes. Your, your protagonist in Pokemon games is, uh, <laughs> we, we could probably find at some point if we wanted to some Pokemon music, that's really good too. <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm sure there's some yes there might be more than some i don't know yeah. um so i guess for me my favorite points is uh and this is kind of like recent because i only kind of recently got super into fire emblem is the the, the diverse cast of characters you get to play with or um control and um mm -hmm. of course the support sure, conversations yes. are always hilarious like just you know how they yes. interact with each other um uh, and uh 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Michael's distracting me here. Silent pro tags are weak. Roy isn't silent and he gets six women. <laughs> Where is Red at? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Yes, yeah, so there's there's uh, unique enemies you fight. There's high stakes, um, but sometimes there's high rewards. And uh, mm -hmm. of course, um, I for me the number one point is the music. That's what really got hooked me into hooked me into Fire Emblem was the music. Like, if I've never would have heard the music, I probably would have never been interested in playing the game to begin with. Because mm -hmm. I'm, it's very hard for me to play RPG games, especially turn based games, because I know I'm in for the long haul. Um, so yeah i i'm i'm thankful for the the very uh uniquely crafted music and just how amazing it is so f that that hooked me into fire emblem um but yeah that's that's it for uh i guess my favorite points about it and i i look forward to playing the rest of them especially mm -hmm. the the japanese only ones that's gonna be interesting to play those ones and um yeah looking because I don't know about you, but I've seen the like timeline, like the um, retrospective or like those long YouTube videos talking about the story. And um, the overall story is really cool for every all the games. Uh, but I would like to experience like the support conversations because those are really funny, in my opinion. Awakening has some hilarious support conversations. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it does. It really does. Um, yeah, I want to play all these games, too, man. I I got to get a hold of some of them. Uh... I did, I think, I thought I had beaten Awakening. That was the one Fire Emblem. I still have Three Houses and other stuff. I still need to finish Fates. But I thought I had finished the game when it's like, oh, you have, you had, uh, I think maybe, I think Awakening had a few different endings. Michael, you'll have to check me on that. But I, I remember when I finished everything and then, um, uh, what was it? Uh, my character. I had a. I made a female character. I think I called her Yunara, if I remember. And she had a husband, and then they had kids, and then the d adventure continues. But I thought, yeah, ends like four times. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, did I? I think I actually finished the game at that point. But then it's like it just kept continuing. I'm like, wait, isn't the game over now? I. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Not multiple endings though. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's been a while since I played. And so I remember getting a DLC and I'm still trying to figure out how to beat this one DLC. It's really challenging and I, I just can't mm. beat it yet. I could finish the game completely now, but I'm like, oh, I want to I want to finish this DLC battle. This one's really tough. So, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't uh, dipped my toes yet into the DLC for uh, Awakening. I have all of them. I just haven't had a chance to play them yet. Um Yep. Which I'm glad I was able to buy before the eShop closed. But uh <laughs> Oh yeah, this is this is a good point. You fight several wars in that game, so you think there, <laughs> there are an ending and there isn't. Always yeah. wait until a dragon is dead. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. so true. <laughs> that is Gosh dang dragon. Yes, if you kill the dragon, then you know you beat the game because that's like always the enemy, the final enemy. <laughs> uh all right. Well, Great. we've come to the end of this, and uh, I appreciate you coming on and uh, hanging out and talking about the music here and uh, doing yeah, your thoughts on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's. I like um, interacting with people that have played these games or have a general idea of them because they played a little bit of them, and uh, also researching the music before they come on always helps too. And um, yes, yeah, so like I said, thanks for swinging on by. And um, no before. Before I go, I'll just do a quick recap of what we talked about. Um, okay. So, uh, should I have uh, should oh, I have Wopa put my uh, my channel name in the thing? I know. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna give I you was... a chance to shout out your what you're working on here. In a oh, minute. okay. I, um, so, okay. Yeah, Wopa can do I'm that not... if he wants. <laughs> oh no, it's fine. I, I'm not trying to rush you or be rude or anything, man. Oh so, no, you're yeah. fine. You're fine. <laughs> So in the beginning, for those who are, who didn't know, we went over the history. We just I just talked about um, the first game and the latest game, and then the composer Yuka Tsujioko. And uh, I'll actually put it up on the screen real quickly. These are the games that she composed music for, and then the rest of the Fire Emblem games she supervised the uh, the sound teams on their um, on the music. Um, but more specifically, she wrote the music for the two games that we talked about today. So thank you for the amazing music that you have composed. And then after that, we went into the music itself 
and we uh, I played clips for you guys, and we talked about the music there, and um, just how different Shadow Dragon and Gaiden is, even though they're on the same console. Uh, Gaiden has like more um, composed music and like more thought out music in that game, and uh, both have themes that have carried over across the other games as well. And then uh, lastly, we just gave our, our thoughts, individual thoughts and opinions on the, the music overall. So before we end this, let me, and before I get you your outro, if you guys want, here's a playlist of the 25th anniversary of Fire Emblem fully orchestrated. And this is a fantastic uh, uh, sound or not soundtrack album. I actually have it on my computer. I've listened to it before and it is, uh, it's really good. And um, it's all orchestrated. And uh, yeah, I I highly encourage you to check it out and uh, just listen to it. There's actually because um, it was uh, done with um, a live audience as well, so there's clapping in it, and there's also um, Japanese narration. And I think they just talk about um, the games, so you can always just skip that part. Let's see, um, this just in: if you mod Echoes Alm into a, being a different class, then he may not be able to attack. <laughs> Well, that's interesting. Not having your MC not be able to attack. Oh, in the overworld. Okay, that is interesting. Um, but yeah, I appreciate the chat. Thank you for everybody that came on by, keeping us entertained, and also fact checking us live. I always <laughs> like having that fact checking live. <laughs> and of course, uh, I don't know why we need to make a poll. <laughs> I know you like saying that, like every live stream you're in, make the poll. We don't have any polls to make, so. Um, but, uh, oh, so anyway, so cash money, uh, why don't you, uh, let us know, advertise yourself, let us know what you got going on and, uh, what we can expect from you in the future. Okay. Well, um, I run a channel called the Phantom Hooligans. Um, and I wasn't sure before what direction I wanted. Now I think I've got more of a direction. Uh, it, it's discussion streams with people. It's lately I've been just doing gaming streams. And so tomorrow night, probably tomorrow night or earlier, I'm going to play uh, Saints Row 2 again. And we're going to see this time if it crashes on me 50 times. We're going to see how long I can go before it crashes <laughs> and then go again. So we'll see. <laughs> Why is it crashing? I, I don't remember. If uh, it's it. an old game. It's got problems uh, on PC, okay. unfortunately. They've tried to fix it, but the the man who was working on the, the mod or something before, he had passed away. And so after that, no one's really done anything. And I, I wish they would fix this. Three is fine, I guess, but two is a mess. Oh, wow. So, yeah. All right, and um, my mod, my top mod, can uh, put your link in the channel again. And uh, <laughs> let's see, Nas has something funny to say, but let me look at Michael first. It's a big deal because you need to attack enemies in the overworld to get advantage. Yes, mm. yes, um, that would be, <laughs> that's important. Thanks, Pop Culture Mechanic. You're always uh, always a blast having you around. Yep. Um, good dude. For, yep. Yeah, definitely good dude. Go subscribe to him. And uh, let's see, St. Rose 2 rules drinking 40s and smoking blunts for health. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. Uh, oh, and then cool. here's uh, Nightbot. Subscribe to uh, Phantom Hooligans. That's So in case there's confusion, Phantom Hooligans is your channel name. Yes. But uh, Cash Money 007 is your like individual name here yes. and also on Twitter. Yes. The Yes, my, my Twitter is the uh, Cash Money 0071. All one and, word. And we could catch you on uh, Pacific Four on Four One Four streams. Yes. And what other streams I, do you usually I, hang out in? I co-host uh, with Pacific on that stream, so that uh, sometimes I'm also on uh, Mr. Phil McCracken stream. I should be oh, yes. on there Monday. Uh, yeah, I get <laughs> I get pretty busy. I just want to make sure that I'm also doing a lot of content on my own stream. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, like I said, I really appreciate you taking time to come out and, and hang with me on uh, this stream. Yeah, um, man, no problem. I'm happy to do it again anytime. Yeah. Um, so for me, when it comes to my schedule, I am going to be streaming the final chapter of Paper Mario nice. on the 64. I don't okay. know. I, I think it'll be Saturday night for you guys in the U.S. Okay. So just keep an eye out. I'll post something on Twitter, on YouTube community. And then... Um, 
the next video game music live stream will be in April. I don't have a date set yet, but we cool. will be talking about the first three Super Mario games because nice. the Mario movie comes out in April. That's true. And um, for that stream, I'm definitely having Nerporial on because he's a huge Mario fanatic. Uh-huh. And uh, I might, I could try to have more people on. It depends on uh, who's mm-hmm. comfortable talking about the Mario music. So if sure. you would like to come on, um, there's an open okay. invite for you. Thanks, and, man. Um, I appreciate it. I'm pretty sure uh, Dempsey will be swinging on by too. Okay. But uh, yeah, we're going to have a blast with that because like, it seems like the Mario movie is going to have a lot of Mario music in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so he, we're going to be talking about that. But uh, yes, and um, Pop Culture Mechanic, um, I'm going to get to the people in the chat here in a second, but uh, we'll shout out people in the chat on their channels. But that's it for me as far as live streaming goes. Um, I'm working on some videos. I can't, I'm not going to reveal them quite yet, but uh, <laughs> just see some more live streams coming down the pipeline. And um, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So before I go, I'd like to acknowledge everyone that came on by. So I'll start from the top to the very first person that was here it was Whoopa. It's RPGs, those are for losers. I know that's an old comment, but uh, he's, he's so full of it. <laughs> There's RPG elements in Pokemon. Nice try, Whoopa. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So Whoopa, thanks for coming on by, man. Pop culture mechanic, always uh, always a gentleman. Thank you for swinging on through. And then we've got one of my f- new Fire Emblem fans. And um, thank you, Michael, for swinging on by. Let's see. Just scrolling on through. We had uh, Mr. Bully himself. <laughs> Classic Phoenix. And, of course, Dadman Watkin. Thanks for swinging on by. I don't have a command for him yet. I need to make one, uh, Whoopa. I'll make one for him. Um, let's see. Oh, yep, of course, the Naporeal Life Form. Thank you for swinging on by. Go ahead and uh, subscribe to his channel and the previous guys that I mentioned as well. Godzillionaire. I think he was here for a quick minute. Yeah. Appreciate you swinging on by. Also, the wonderful Steven Ranson, who was streaming with Roman, but he decided <laughs> to swing on by. He's double streaming it. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, Nas, the master troll himself, the master vampire troll. Thanks for uh, always coming on. A recent viewer of mine, actually. Alex Moore, another Fire Emblem fan. Always good having uh, him around. And then I think that's almost everybody. Just doing some last checks. Yeah, that's everybody. Uh, Yeah, so once again... Thank you so much, everybody that came on by. Spread this out if you want people to listen to some Fire Emblem music uh, discussion. We'll be, uh, uh, like I said, Mario, Super Mario is the next live stream. Um, and then after that, we're going to do Zelda, sorry, in, in May, because, you know, Tears of the King- Kingdom comes out. So we're going to talk about the first two Zelda games music. Oh, nice. And then uh, after that, I'm, we're probably, I'm probably going to take a break, and uh, I'll think of a different game uh, franchise we can discuss. But... In the future, I, I don't want to talk only about the old games. I like to talk about modern games as well, because I think a lot mm-hmm. of modern games have good soundtracks. So yes. um, with that being said, I'm going to play this outro video. So if you guys want to check it out, it's only about it's less than two minutes long. And then once the video ends and you see the title screen or the uh, the thumbnail screen, then the, the live stream will end. So um, once again, stick around, Cash, and uh, mm-hmm. I will catch everybody later. And uh, here we go. Thank you.